You are a real estate agent and your listing is not selling. It's time to talk price reduction with your seller. How do you do it? What should you talk about? And what should you say right after this? Now, as real estate agents, we can kind of clam up and get nervous about a price reduction conversation. Simply put, we're trying to take money out of our seller's pockets, or that's sort of the thought process that goes into that conversation. Because while your home might be listed up here, we're trying to suggest that the home actually should be priced here, and this is the money that the seller's not ultimately going to realize. So that can be a tough conversation, and sometimes we make it a bigger deal than we should. Every market can be different, and so depending on how long your house has been on the market, your seller might be more or less ripe for that conversation and expecting it, and maybe even knowing that it's coming. Where I live, if a home hasn't sold within 30 to 60 days, it's typically time to start thinking about a price reduction, if not sooner. Now, in 11 years, one of the things I've found that sellers just simply don't like is a price reduction for price reduction's sake. So you gotta come armed with some data, some anecdotes, and some feedback about the listing experience so far in order to support this idea for reducing the price. Now for me, I try to do a lot of this work up front and along the way. So every week, if not more often, I try to update my sellers with feedback from the showings. What are agents saying? What are the buyers saying at open houses? What do they think about the price? What do they think about the condition? Is there some fatal flaw in the property, like way too many stairs or a critical slope that is scaring people off? All of these things could ultimately affect the value. And we wanna evaluate all of this information and feedback so we aren't just arbitrarily picking a new price and sticking our finger up in the air trying to figure out what size price reduction would actually work. So when I'm having that conversation about reducing the price, I try to summarize all the feedback that we've had to that point. The seller's probably already seen that because I've been updating them along the way, but I like to have a summary of everything that we've talked about that people have talked about to me, so we can have all that feedback in one location to look at as we're having that conversation. Another piece of info that I like to include in that conversation are all the sales that are happening around us. So if there's other activity happening in your neighborhood, other similar properties that we think are our competition, and they're now pending or sold, and they've sold before us, we wanna look at that and figure out why. Why do people like that house at that price better than the current house that we're talking about? And after we look at all the feedback and crunch some of the sales data, in the end, pricing is kind of a simple concept. If we are actually on the market and we have people coming through and looking at the home but not making an offer, for whatever reason, they're not seeing the ultimate value that we're asking relative to what it is we're offering them. So we need to adjust and adjust as quickly as possible. I suggest around 20 to 25 days, we're having that conversation about if our price is appropriate, compared to the feedback that we're getting from people and compared to all the sales data. Then at 30 to 60 days, you could execute on that price reduction. In my market in Seattle, the faster you can be with your price reduction, the more success you're gonna have. So if all of a sudden you come out the gates and you list your home and you're just not getting anything, it's crickets chirping and nobody's showing up, it probably has to do with price. If you're getting a lot of people through and nobody offering, well, it means they like what they see online, but when they show up, it's just not adding up to all the value that you're ultimately asking of them. So both of those scenarios would be perfect for a price reduction, and then it comes down to what is the appropriate price. And then from there, it's a conversation and a data crunching about how big your price reduction should be. Again, in my market, a small price reduction doesn't usually move the needle in the marketplace. It takes something in the two to 3% at a minimum to get people looking, to get people that have seen your house to come back in and to build up that excitement on what might be a stale listing at this point. I hope this is helpful. For more tips and tricks about buying and selling real estate, please subscribe. We'd love to have you and we'll see you on the next video.